In this talk, I'm going to be talking about giving feedback on performance. For example, feedback on swimming. So last summer, I was really struggling in the swimming pool. So I called my friend Cindy and said, hey, Cindy, can you give me some feedback? And Cindy, who's a really cool person, she said, of course. And so she watched me swim for a while. And then she said, here's some things you're doing well. Your arm is entering the water in the right place. You're exhaling underwater. Your breathing looks good, etc." And then she said, here's something that's going to change your life. And she said, you're crossing over on your stroke. And I'm going to show you a way that's much easier. And so she um, gave me this one little pointer that just dramatically changed my swimming. It was outstanding. Feedback is a very natural process. So uh, parents helping their children learn to fish, learn to sew, for example, are instances of feedback. Feedback on performance, what we mean is information, i.e. knowledge, that helps a person perform better. How to swim faster and further. How to be a better writer. How to be a better designer. How to be a better parent how to be better at working in a team, and how to get knowledge down in a more effective way. Or you fill in the blank, what do you want to become better at? So, why learn the feedback process? Well, number one, it's really fun. It's cool to become better at something, for example, to become better at playing the guitar. Number two, it's nice to have a path for getting better. I always know how I'm going to improve. Number three, when you do the feedback process over and over, you get this growth over time. You just get better and better. And when you look back at your progress, it is a process of transformational uh, change. When I started, I was like a grub or caterpillar. It was really hard and all confusing. But now this is very easy. I'm like a butterfly. So this person is John Wooden, who is considered one of the best coaches ever in any sport. And John Wooden used the feedback process, as do all good coaches. And another benefit of the feedback process is this builds really high collaboration and incredibly good results and great learning. So what's in it for me? Here's some of the benefits. When you practice the feedback process, you get fun because learning and growing is fun. You've always got a path for growing. Number three, this is essential for getting real high performance, great results, and collaboration. And number four, it's a transformation process where you can go from struggle and difficulty to doing things in easy, cool ways. Transformational change. Giving feedback is very straightforward. Number one, you want to care. And the key idea is if you give feedback to others, you're going to learn and grow more than they are. So if you care about yourself, give feedback. And of course, if you care about other people, give feedback. Step two is observe them doing the actual performance. Step three is describe what they're doing well. And then step four, suggest ideas that will help them do better. That is, suggest improvements. How do we receive feedback? Number one, choose to be open. Then listen for understanding. What is this person really telling me? Sort the feedback into strengths. Here's what I'm doing well and improvements. Here's ideas that I can do better. And then adapt and apply this information to make yourself better. The Harvard theorist, Chris Argerus, the Harvard theorist, Chris Argerus, tells us that feedback and growth, in fact, are very rare in people. Um, People who actually learn how to do feedback and to grow, it's perhaps 5 to 10% of the population. And the reason is, is the brain naturally rejects information that it views as critical. And there's kind of a cycle here that looks like this. Let's say, for example, um, my wife tells me that I'm being very sloppy around the house. Here's how defensive reasoning works. I'm a good and smart person. A good and smart person wouldn't be sloppy. You're judging me. You're wrong. I disagree. I do a pretty good job of picking up after myself. So in defensive reasoning, I've rejected the information. I haven't learned anything and I haven't made any changes. Here's how to defeat defensive reasoning. First off, judgment. 
That is great. That is good. That is awesome. That's bad, awful. It's hardwired into our brain. And there's a time for judgment. That's an awesome car. That's an awful car. I would never buy it. Judgment has a purpose. But when you want to learn and grow, what you want to do is tune out the judgment. You cannot stop it. Your brain's going to do this automatically, but just don't pay attention to it. Then look at data and evidence and then make informed decisions based on sound reasoning. And of course, these ideas right here are also known as the scientific method or critical thinking. These are really important life skills. Here is how to communicate a strength. Let me give you an example. So Cindy is watching me swim. She explains what I did. Your, wa your hand entered the water um, X number of inches above your head. The reason why this is important is it reduces extra drag, so therefore you go faster. The key idea is always in this little window of X inches by X inches, always enter your hand here and enter it thumb down. We call this proper hand entry. Here is how to communicate an improvement. Again, let me go back to Cindy watching me swim. And she says, here is what's going on. You're crossing over. What that means is you're pulling your arm sideways. So that's the what. The why is you're now using your arm motion to push sideways, which is not moving you down the pool. So you're wasting a ton of energy and not getting anything for this. Now what you want to do is enter your water. Now what you want to do is have your hand enter the water where you're entering it and then pull straight back just underneath a line going through your shoulder. And this habit you have is so common that we call it crossing over. It has a name. So what you always want to do when you're swimming is make sure that you are not crossing over. Here's a really big idea. Researchers such as Anders Ericsson at Florida State are telling us that People who become really good at something do that simply because they spend a lot of time learning. The notion that there's some innate talent is largely false. So you always want to look at yourself and say, I can be a great designer. I can be a great writer. I can be a great engineer. Whatever it is, is motivating to you. Here's another really big idea. The um, improvement way, I like the Japanese term, the Kaizen way, is you just take these little baby steps. Every improvement you make should just be something that's very easy to follow up on. You don't uh, try and make these big wholesale changes. I want to leave you with four big ideas. Number one is that anyone who chooses to can be an extraordinary engineer, a great designer, really good at math modeling, really good at writing, whatever you want. And this isn't opinion, this is science. Big idea number two, the path to becoming much better is really about using feedback and growth. And Anders Ericsson calls this deliberate practice. Big idea number three, accept and defeat defensive reasoning. Most people, when they get feedback, they reject the feedback. They get angry. They blame the person. I'm a good person. This can't possibly be right. And understand, this is a natural process of the brain. So all you have to do is turn off good and bad. And just don't pay attention when you're having those thoughts and just saying, okay, what am I doing well? How can I improve? Big idea number four. Here is the process. Get feedback, act on it, and repeat. Small steps. Do this over and over over a period of time, just be really patient and of course, have fun. If you do that, you will certainly grow your performance. Thank you very much for listening to this video. Hope you learned a few things and we'll see you next time.